Yeah, there was a, there's a story, again, over the weekend, uh, over the last couple of weeks, really, about uh, Ukrainian corruption. I'm not going to get into a lot of details here, but, you know, Ukraine, before the war, was a very corrupt country. It has been corrupt since uh, its separation of the Soviet Union. I'm sure it was corrupt before then, too. But uh, the more, it recently, I think before the war, it was ranked 122nd in the world in terms of corruption. The only country in all of Europe uh, listed as more corrupt than Ukraine was Russia. But this is the difference. Uh, first, I think Zelensky was taking steps to eradicate corruption in Ukraine. They were slow. They were partial. They were not very effective. They were far from ideal. Uh, they were far from, uh, from ideal. But uh, the... Um, but this is the difference. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, there's, there's been breaking stories uh, in Ukrainian media about corruption um, in a number of different uh, places within the Ukrainian government, some of it having to do with deployment of, of the, the money and the resources being provided to Ukraine by uh, the European Union and by the United States, um, and, and uh, corrupt individuals were named. Uh, immediately, an investigation was launched. Those people were fired. They're going to be prosecuted. Uh, and there is, there is outrage within Ukraine, and uh, uh, there's clearly, at least in this segment, a cleaning of the house. And indeed, I think this just provides Zelensky with an opportunity to get rid of people he might have wanted to get, get rid of anyway but because of corruption. But now, because it's, it's, it's kind of an international story, he can do it, uh, uh, you know, uh, he can do it more freely. Uh, imagine if this story had broken in Russia. If a story had broken in Russia about corruption within Russia, uh, one of the oligarchs or something like that, does anybody think, or, you know, Putin himself, does anybody think that actions would have been taken uh, to address this, that uh, people would have been arrested, there would be courts, that people would be fired? No. I mean, quite the contrary. The reporter would be arrested and put in jail. That is, the people complaining about the regime would have been punished. And that's really one of the many uh, differences between Ukraine and uh, Russia. Ukraine is not a Western uh, uh, good uh, country when it comes to uh, its political uh, regime. It is indeed corrupt, and it does have significant problems, and it does have problems of uh, political corruption, economic corruption, and also it has problems of massive cronyism and so on. The difference is that there are forces in Ukraine trying to fix it, and when and, and there was a relatively independent media. And when the media reports on a project, on a, on a, on a uh, occurrence, something is actually done about it. Something is actually done about it. Whereas in Russia, there is no independent media, none whatsoever. Indeed, the last fragment of independent media uh, last week uh, the last fragment of independent media in Moscow was shut down last week, and anybody linking to, referring to an article by that media uh, will be tried for treason in Russia. There's no independent media. It's gone, finished, kaput, completely. Um, but in, uh, 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 in, and it's just as corrupt, actually more corrupt than Ukraine, and yet there's nothing. And nobody complains about that. Very little complaining about Russian uh, corruption. So uh, a, a big difference uh, in the level of freedom between the two countries. Ukraine is more free than Russia and is moving in the right direction. Russia, before the war, was less free than Ukraine and moving in the wrong direction. And then add to that the fact that Russia invaded Ukraine and you've got the bad guys and the good guys in this conflict pretty well sorted out and pretty clear cut without it much ambiguity. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. 
press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.